With GitHub Desktop, we can commit changes locally and push them to GitHub. Recall the steps? We make our changes in our working folder, adding or editing files. We add the changed files to staging, which makes a copy of the files. When we are ready, we commit the files from staging. This creates a snapshot of our files. To copy the commit history from our local repo to GitHub, we push the files. But if we are working on the repository with others, we first pull any recent commit history and then push our commit. Let's try out these steps using GitHub Desktop. But note that GitHub Desktop does not support staging. It tracks our changes and allows us to commit directly from its list of changed files. We'll edit some of the files in our working folder, commit the changes to our local repository, then push the commit history to GitHub, all using GitHub Desktop. I have GitHub Desktop open with recipes as my current repository. I'm looking at the Changes tab, which shows no current changes. From the Repository menu, select Show in Explorer or Show in Finder on the Mac. It brings up the working folder. When we cloned the GitHub repository, it copied the license and README files to our working folder. But now's the really cool part. Let's make a change to one of the files. Open the README file with a text editor. On Windows, use Notepad. On a Mac, use TextEdit. I'll delete my, capitalize recipes, and add a paragraph of text. Have any great recipes to share? Feel free to add them to our site. Save and exit. Going back to GitHub Desktop, it shows our changed file in the Changes tab. Hovering over the gold dot, it lets us know that this file was modified. On the right side, we see our change. Red and minus means we've effectively deleted a line. Green and plus means we've added a line. Now let's repeat this editing process and change the license file as well. From the repository menu, select Show in Explorer or Show in Finder on the Mac. Open the license file in a text editor, again using Notepad on Windows or Text Edit on a Mac. I'll edit my name to include my middle initial. Save the file and exit. Click back on GitHub Desktop and it finds our second change. Click the file to see the change details on the right. It even knows exactly what we changed. As I mentioned earlier, GitHub Desktop does not support staging, so we don't add files to staging before committing them. Recall our next step? We commit the changes to our local repository. In GitHub Desktop, the Commit option is down here in the lower left. We enter a brief summary of our change as our commit message. Enhance README and update name and license. Hmm. Notice the and I typed here? I've listed two reasons for this commit, which signals that these changes may be better as two separate commits, each with a singular purpose. Each commit tells Git that you've made some changes which you want to record. Best practice is that each commit should be independent. That makes it easier to compare or go back to a prior commit. And when you're working on team projects, it makes it easier to resolve merge conflicts. We'll look at merge conflicts a bit later in this course. To improve our commit, let's uncheck the license file so it's not included in this commit and change our commit message to Enhance README. Then click Commit to Main to create a commit with a selected change. Going to the History tab, we now see two commits. Clicking on the most recent commit, we see that one file was changed and the details of that change. Get gathered up appropriate commit data, including our username, the date, and the commit message. It then created a snapshot of the project files, including all changes selected for the commit. In this example, it won't include the change to our license file since we excluded it from the commit. Lastly, it generates a hash from the commit content. We can view the unique commit hash by hovering here. Now let's repeat that process for our license file. On the Changes tab, notice the README file is no longer listed because it's been committed. Check the license file, 
set the commit message to update name and license, and click Commit to Main. Git creates the new commit. Viewing the History tab, we see our latest commit. In this example, we happen to have one file in these last two commits, but often a commit will include many files. The files to include in a commit depends on which files must be changed to complete a specific task. For example, if we have a dozen recipe pages on our site and need to add the calorie count to each, we may have 12 files in one commit as they are all related to one change. Our commit history is now stored in our local repository. What's our next step? If you said push to remote, you are correct. We want to copy our commit history to our remote repository for safekeeping. Let's pop back over to GitHub. We see that it still only has one commit from when it added the README and license files. Going back to GitHub Desktop, click the Changes tab. Here on the right, it lets us know that we don't currently have any local uncommitted changes. But we do have two local commits waiting to be pushed to GitHub. Notice that it says Push Commits to the Origin Remote. Recall from earlier that by default, Git refers to our remote repository as Origin. Let's pick Push Origin. You'll see some status messages here. GitHub Desktop copies our local commit history to our remote repository on GitHub. Let's take a look. From the Repository menu, select View on GitHub, and it brings up the repository page. We see that we now have three commits, and our README displays our updated text. Click on the three commits, and we see each of our commits with their commit message. Click on the repository name to get back to the repository page. Going back to GitHub Desktop, we now have our local and remote repositories in sync. Yay! We are done with GitHub Desktop, so let's close it and go back to the slides. So, as we've seen in the demos in this lesson, GitHub Desktop is a useful tool for working with Git and GitHub. It can be used to track our changes, compare file versions, commit changes, and push our commit history to GitHub. Next up, let's talk more about commit messages.